Pound for Pound Sports Entertainment. Hit the like button, comment below, share, do all of that. It's your host, F. Merritt. Greatly appreciate y'all for tuning in, man. Go ahead and hit that like button right now for your boy. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button for all things sports entertainment related. It's your host, F. Merritt. A um, couple things. First of all, yesterday, it was an interview, I believe, with uh, PBC that Keith Thurman did. And he, he revealed that the fight that he has against Mario Barrios, I believe, that's supposed to take place in two weeks, I believe. One or two weeks, whatever. It's supposed to take place at the MGM Grand or somewhere in Las Vegas. You know, check it out, whatever. But that fight's going to be a, a WBC title eliminator. So we're looking at a potential mandatory fight for Earl Spence WBC belt. Now, why is that a big deal? Well, hell, let me tell you. Earl Spence... <laughs> Earl Spence is going to be taking on um, Ugas, right? Earl Spence has the IBF, WBC. Ugas has the WBA welterweight championships, right? So it's unification. After that, from what Keith Thurman is, is, is alluding to, if he gets past Mario Barrios, he will have to, he will become the WBC mandatory, and Earl Spence will have to either fight Keith Thurman or vacate that belt. Now, the reason why I have a problem with it, I have a couple problems with it. Now, I'm a Keith Thurman fan through and through. I, I, that's my dog. That's, I, I, you know, I, I, I support Keith Thurman. I support all the fighters, but that's my dog right there. But Keith Thurman has been inactive, okay? You just came off of a loss to Manny Pacquiao. You've been gone for, what, two years? And then you come right back into a WBC title eliminator for a mandatory spot? Against a guy in Mario Barrios who just came off of a loss to Javante Tank Davis. And he's coming up from 140 to 147. He's never even fought at the welterweight division. I'm confused. How how is this how is this a a a a, a title eliminator? I'm confused on that, right? So I looked at the rankings, all right. I didn't see Keith Thurman's name in the WBC or Mario or Mario Barrios' name in the WBC welterweight rankings. So, you know what I'm saying? I did notice something else. The WBC Silver was vacant. The WBC International has a speedy Rashidi Ellis on there. Why wouldn't you just move Rashidi Ellis from the from the from the international to the silver spot and just move everybody else up? Virgil Ortiz is the number one contender, right? I seen Boots on there. I seen Josito Lopez on there. I seen Denny Garcia. I seen Mikey Garcia. You know, I seen a couple, a couple of names. Cool. I did not see Keith Thurman. I'm confused. That's the rankings that I looked at. Now, maybe they updated them. Maybe they will update them. Whatever. But all I'm saying is Keith Thurman alluded to that they kept worried about his weight. You know, the WBC was asking about his weight and everything like that. When they usually do that, they usually like, okay, it's going to be a title eliminator or stuff like that. He broke it down. I'll put the link in the description. You guys can check that out for yourselves. Now, like I said, I have a problem with that. I'm a Keith Thurman fan. Cool. You took too much time off, dude. You've been gone for two years. Now, I ain't mad at you. You got, what, at least $10 million to fight uh, to fight Manny Pacquiao? And a hell of a fight. I don't care what they say. Some people, oh, he got his ass whooped. And, nah, no. Nah. That was a good fight. If anybody thinks Keith Thurman has done something wrong with you. Now, he's, I don't know, I feel like he's one foot in the game, one foot out the game. And, you know what I'm saying? He's been inactive, like I said. He's been injured. He came off a of hand, uh, I think, hand surgery after the Pacquiao fight. Some people are questioning, you know, if he could take it to the body, which, I mean, it is what it is. Listen, it's boxing. You're going to get hit to the body. You're going to get hit in the face. You're going to get hit everywhere. But what happens after you get hit? Keith Thurman didn't go down against Colazzo. He stopped him on a stool. Keith Thurman didn't go down against uh, Manny Pacquiao. He kept fighting. He got knocked down the first round and started bouncing back and started winning rounds until that body shot at the end of, I believe, the either end of the 10th or 11th fight. I mean, 10th or 11th round, I believe. I'm not sure, one of those rounds. And he definitely lost that round. He went on retreat mode. He was hurt, okay? It is what it is. He lost to the better man. Cool. But let's not forget, Keith Thurman versus Errol Spence was one of the, it, it would have been one of the biggest fights at the welterweight division, right? Surely the biggest fight on the PBC side of the street. Okay, let's not forget that. Now, this is the problem that the fans have, right? It's the fact that when these fights are ready to be made, we're not getting them. We're tired of begging. We're tired of waiting. We have too many options in America for us to be waiting around. You're either going to give us what we want, when we want it, or we don't care anymore. And right now, with Keith Thurman uh, alluding to 
the, that his fight against Mario Barrios is going to be a WBC title eliminator, and he could potentially take on Earl Spence after he hopefully defeats Ugas in a, in a unification. I don't, we don't, I don't, you know, whatever. A lot of fans are like, I don't really care. Now everybody's moved on from their fight. We want Errol and Spence. So this is what we're going to get. Hopefully, hopefully Errol Spence bounces back. He's looking good in camp, hopefully. Hopefully his eye is completely healed. He, you know, that time off gave him more time to heal from the car accident, stuff like that. Okay, cool. But I'd want no excuses. Hypothetically, if Errol Spence beats Ugas, right? And hypothetically, if Keith Thurman beats Mario Barrios, we're going to have Keith Thurman and Errol Spence, I say, probably June, right? So, therefore, Terrence Crawford's not going to have anybody to fight. And like I said, we got to hope Errol Spence fights three times this year. Because if he fights three times this year, hopefully we can get Bud and Errol November, December time. You feel what I'm saying? Now, in the meantime... <laughs> You know, I got to do what I do. In the meantime, while Bud is waiting around for Spence, you can fight, hmm, I don't know, uh, Josh Taylor after he fights Catterall in February next month. You can fight, um, hmm, Virgil Ortiz, you know, after his fight. Hmm. You can fight Jerome Boots Ennis. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? But right now, Terrence Crawford is going to be fighting Bob Arum in the court of law. Now, We've all seen the lawsuit. It looks like a, a, a you know, defamation lawsuit. It looks like a, a breach of contract lawsuit. It is what it is, man. I, I, I hate things, you know, came to this, but it is what it is. Terrence Crawford did not get the Pacquiao fight. Bob Arum stopped that. I have a problem with Bob Arum doing that. He's been on record saying that I stopped the Pacquiao fight because I didn't want Manny Pacquiao to get hurt. Bro, you know this is boxing? You know Errol Spence? would not be in the position he would be in right now if Bob Arum did not stop that fight with Manny Pacquiao and, and Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford would have had two belts. He would have had two belts instead of one belt. Errol Spence would have had two belts. That would have sped up the undisputed situation at the welterweight division. That's 147 for you guys that don't know. That would have sped up the time. Man, I'm, I'm tired of waiting, bro. Everybody, listen, Mayweather and Pacquiao really left a bad taste in everybody's mouth. I'm not waiting six, seven years for a fight, and I got to hope it lives up to the potential. We can have Errol versus Bud two times. Errol doesn't have much time at Wilt to wait. We, he, we know he, he's killing himself to make the wait. Well, he doesn't have much time. Bud's got all the time in the world. Well, no, no, I take that back. Bud doesn't have that much time either. He's in his 30s. He doesn't want to fight until his late 30s taking that punishment, dealing with that. He's been fighting his whole life. Come on, man. Let's make the fight. That's why I've seen Ugas on Twitter. He's been, listen, if you, <laughs> Ugas is, is very verbal. Uh -uh. He's very expressive. He, he'll tell you how he feels. He's always on Twitter. He's very active, right? So a lot of people was getting on Earl Spence. A lot of people was kind of getting mad about everything, about the fight that's even happening with Earl Spence and Ugas. He came out and said, hey, don't get on Earl Spence. Leave him alone. And you know, he doesn't understand why the fans are disappointed because, it, you know, Earl Spence is fighting another champion. And I get that. I understand every every side, every argument to it. I just it's, it's it comes a time where a lot of people are saying. It's not about the belts. See, it's a never ending battle, right? It's either it's going to be about the belts. You want all the belts or you want the money, right? I'm going to use this, for example, Earl Spence is making money. I damn sure I, I gotta give him his credit. He's making his money in Texas, right? He has a great following. Cool. He goes in there, he puts on a, a phenomenal show. He's a great fighter. Terrence Crawford has already been undisputed at 140. He wants undisputed at 147. Like, shit. If 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 we're the fans, in some fans' eyes, do the belts even matter? You know what I'm saying? Canelo could have been undisputed at one at 154. He dropped the belt and moved on. He could have did it. He moved on. Either 154 or 160, I'm not sure. But he moved on. Canelo fought Triple G. I think Triple G had all the belts, but it was a 55-45 was a split for in Canelo's favor because Canelo brings more to the table. Both have fan bases. Great. Canelo's the big star. You feel what I'm saying? So sometimes in certain situations, it doesn't matter who has the belts. 
It doesn't matter about your accolades. It matters about how much money you are making. And I understand that. This is prize fighting. This is a business. I get it. And I think that's what a lot of Terrence Crawford fans and most likely, you know, Terrence Crawford and his team have to understand. It's not about your accolades and accomplishments. It's about how much money you're generating, how, how many butts you're putting in the seats, how many pay-per-views you're doing. Cool. Cool. So right now, from the interview that Bernie the Boxer did on the Boxing Voice yesterday, I'll put the link in the description, he's saying they're not even talking to him. It's just too much stuff. It's too many moving parts. There's too much going on, okay? Tim Smith comes out the other day, and he was saying, oh, that fight needs to be built up more, or you know, Terrence Crawford wasn't marketed the right way or whatever. And it looks to me like if Terrence Crawford does or has signed with PBC, they're going to try to have him fight somebody else. Now, the perfect person in my mind would be to be Errol Spence, go ahead and get the fight out the way. But if you want to give Terrence Crawford some kind of credit, I mean, he's got credibility. I'm not going to say he doesn't have credibility. But if you want to, like, build him up, you put him in there with Keith Thurman. If in a perfect world, Keith Thurman goes in there, beats the dog shit out of, um, out of Mario Barrios, looks phenomenal, gets a stop, it's cool. Terrence Crawford is there, calls him out, gets in the ring, cool. Makes that fight happen, right? Ugas and Earl Spence fight, cool, great. Now, then we can make Bud and Spence June. We'll say, well, yeah, June, June time. That's fine. Something like that. June, July, whatever, whatever. I just, I don't, I'm tired of wasting time. I don't need these unnecessary fights. I would love to have seen Errol Spence and Keith Thurman years ago. I would have loved to see it. But it, it's always like this in boxing. When the fight, when, when in our mind, when the fight is right, let's make it happen. No, 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 no. <laughs> We're not going to get what we want. Mm -mm. Never works out that way, right? It's always a, oh, we're going to have you fight this person and he's going to fight that person. Like, yeah, oh, damn. And then stuff happens in between. Right now, I don't trust Earl Spence. I don't trust, no, I take that back. I don't trust any fighter, right? And the reason why is because I look at history. I look at the recent history of this, this, this era of boxing. We could have got Wilder and AJ. All the back and forth, the 50 million and, and the, the zone deal and all this other crap, right? And here goes little Andy Ruiz in a late replacement coming into Madison Square Garden and beating the dog shit out of AJ, knocking him down four times and making him, you know, stopping him. It messes up everything. Messes up everything. Here comes Tyson Fury coming out of nowhere. He doing a draw with Wilder. Still got the contract going. He drags it out two more fights. Then they have a second fight, beats him, and then he has to go to court to be forced to get back in there with Wilder for a third fight, and we wasted so many years, bro. We didn't even get Wilder AJ. They haven't even got AJ Fury. I don't. There's no other super fights we can make for this year. I don't know what what super fight can you make this year. What Canelo Charlo super fight potentially? <clears throat> uh, what Terence Crawford, Earl Spence. So that's a definite super fight. What else, what else can we do? You know what I'm saying? I don't know any other super fights right now. Come on, man. Let's make this stuff happen, bro. Like, I'm tired of waiting. I, me, I'm tired of waiting. I feel like... Let, uh, I'm just frustrated, man. I'm just frustrated because it's too much talking. I was okay with Errol, do, you know, fighting Ugas. He's dead. Exactly what he said he was going to do. I'm cleaning up my side of the streets. I'm getting the third belt. So when we come to negotiation with Terrence Crawford, you should maybe Terrence Crawford should have took the 60-40. He really probably should have took the 60-40. But then again, this is the thing that's killing me. The fighters are sitting here saying this and that when they don't even run their career. You got to talk to the managers. You got to talk to the promoters. You know, that's the people we got to talk to. That's people we need to start putting pressure on because these fighters don't even know. Some fighters don't even know when they get offers because it doesn't get to them. You know, I get it. You got plans. This is what the plan is. This is what the goal is. Eh, eh, eh. Take care of that person, that person, that person. Then we'll make it happen after the fight's built up, after the money is right, after you get into your 30s. This is what it looks like. Till you get into your 30s and the other guy you're chasing is looking vulnerable or he's looking real shaky in his last fight, then we got the blueprint on how to beat him. Then we can make that happen. And that's what I don't like. When was the last 50-50 fight everybody's seen? Somebody tell me. What's the last 50-50 fight? You sat there and was like, oh, man, I don't know who's going to win this. Oh, God. I'm, I'm nervous about this. How much you going to put on the fight? Ah, I can't even bet on this one. When was the last time somebody did that? When was the last time we got that fight? 
if we did have a potential super fight or a 50 50 fight they gonna be older we don't never get the rematches come on man we shouldn't have to beg for the fights i'm tired of hearing both teams going back and forth talking but yet you still have other opponents in front of you that's what i'm mad about i feel bad for bernie man salute to bernie the the, the boxer man that was on the boxing voice i feel bad for them man because it's like god damn can we just fight? I hear the frustration in his voice. He's pissed. He's tired. He, he even said, I'm tired of talking about it, bro. Like, F them. You know what I'm saying? I'm tired of them. They, you know what I'm saying? Let's just fight. You shouldn't have to be chasing somebody down the street, pulling up on somebody, going to their fight, go, uh, uh, you know, being in each other's face after the fight, talking to them on the phone, uh, tagging each other on Twitter, tagging each other on Instagram, saying this, going at, like, I'm tired, bro. Let's just make the fight. After the Ugas fight, if this fight don't happen between Errol Spence and, and, and Terrence Crawford, I don't want to hear nothing else about it. Because I got a feeling. This is my feeling. I feel like that fight's probably going to happen at 54. I, 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 re, I just thought about this, right? I feel like the fight's going to happen at 54. I feel like, because you already got Lubin against Fundora for the WBC belt, right? Now, of course, this is going to take place after um, Castanos and... Um, and Jamil Charlo after they have undisputed, right? So I would imagine the winner of that undisputed is going to move up to 160. Okay, cool, great, awesome, no problem. So in the meantime, when you move up to 160, whoever has the belts, they're going to disperse the belts and they're going to go everywhere. So Lubin and um, Fandora is going to be going for the WBC belt. It's good. Right now it's for the WBC interim belt, right? But by the time that, that whoever wins the undisputed at 154 between Castanos and uh, Charlo, when they disperse the belts, that will become the full world championship. So that's one belt right there, right? I feel like if, if Earl Spence wants to move up, that's the first belt he's going to get is a WBC belt, which means he's going to get the winner of Lubin and, and um, Fandora. Okay, cool. Great. Awesome. Now, in the meantime, Terrence Crawford can easily move up and get whoever has the WBO belt, right? Because that's one of the rules of being a WBO champion. You can move up. It's the same thing he did, I believe, at 135. Same thing he did at 140 when he was undisputed. And now he's doing the same thing. He's, Or in my mind, he's going to do the same thing at 154. So that's one belt for WBC for Spence at 154. One belt for w, uh, WBO for uh, Terrence Crawford at 54, right? So, bam, bam, okay. Now, the only thing you guys got to do again is just somebody get the IBF, which will most likely be Spence, and then somebody go get the WBA and, and Terrence Crawford. Now we have undisputed 154. Because everybody at 154, I guarantee you, is going to probably move up to 160. All right, Danny already said he's going to 54. So maybe we get Danny. Maybe Danny gets that WBA belt at 154 or the IBF belt at 154, and then he fights Terrence at 54. You never know, you know? Thurman says he wants to stay at 47. He's not going to 54. I, 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 Thurman has one foot out the game, one foot in the game. Cool, whatever. It just pisses me off. I see the play. I see it already. I feel like if it don't happen at 47, that's the play that they're going to do at 54, and it's going to take, what, probably two years. So we're going to wait another two years. Oh, my God. I don't have time for this, bro. Another two years. Terrence Crawford's going to be old as hell. He's probably going to be in his late 30s. He's staying in shape. But it's just frustrating, man. I'm frustrated for the team of Terrence Crawford. I'm frustrated for everything. Um, boxing fans, we just tired, bro. We tired. We just want to see the fights. We shouldn't have to beg for these fights. We shouldn't have to. If if if, just make one belt. I like I said, my last video after before this, I feel like boxing is just a power struggle between the promoters. Between Bob Arum, Al Heyman, and and, and um, Eddie Hearn, I'm well, I'm not even putting Oscar in there. He ain't whatever. He got his fighters fighting in like 37 title eliminators when they're the mandatory, waiting for somebody to move up. That's that's I don't respect that. <clears throat> but that's all it is. It's a power struggle between all of them, and the fans got to suffer. The fans got to suffer. It's let me make this move right here. Oh, he got that belt. Okay, well, he's the mandatory right now. Okay, drop that belt. I'm not even gonna have him. I'm not gonna have my fighter fight that guy. Or he he doesn't. I don't like him fighting this. He can lose this. Or it's too much moving around, bro. Just at this point, just do one belt, one promotion, one belt, one network. It's not hard. When somebody when I'm sitting there watching a fight 
with, with my friends or my family and somebody asked me the most simplest question hey who's the champ i should not have to pull out a piece of paper and a pencil and have to break this shit down to them and be like well you know he's got this belt but it's not the full belt but it's another guy in the uk that's got the full belt but then oh canelo's got that belt but he's the franchise and then blah 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 like damn i thought it was boxing i thought this was this was two men in the ring or two women in the ring to see who the best is, who has the belt. That's the champion right there. I thought it was, let's see who the best is in each division. Now they got 37,000 belts. They got a belt that's fake. That first wasn't transferable. Now it's transferable. And they're coming around telling the, the person with the real belt saying they not the belt, the, the belt holder. They, they the pride champion. Then they're taking it back saying they're the full champion. This is why boxing is messed up. <clears throat> This is exactly why boxing is messed up. You got a guy in Keith Thurman, who that's my dog, but I got to be real. We got a guy in Keith Thurman and a guy in Mario Barrios, who's both coming off of losses. Mario Barrios is coming up from 140 to 147. Keith Thurman is coming off of a loss in, in, in a two-year layoff to fight in a title eliminator for the WBC to become the mandatory for Errol Spence, which that makes no sense. You're not even ranked. It makes no sense to me. How? How? It's just, and then, oh, Lord. And then they got the nerve to charge us $75 for the pay-per-view. You you trying to charge me $75 for the tune-up card with Leo Santa Cruz as a co-made event coming off of, uh, uh, you know, coming off of his layoff and, and his last knockout defeat to take on some guy? I can't think off the top of my mind right now. But to take on a guy? Then you got the main event, Keith Thurman and Mario Barrios. No belt on the line, but a title eliminator potentially. Shit. $75? Shit. If y'all want to order, cool. I'm not telling y'all don't order it. But come on, bro. This is a free. This is a Fox. This is a fo good night of boxing on Fox. This is what this is. They could have gave it to Showtime. I'm going to be real. They could have put that on Showtime, bro. Love Keith Thurman. Hope he comes back strong. Mario Barrios, hope he puts on a great effort. You know, you know what I'm saying? But that, uh, nah, that's not this is not pay per view worthy. Luis Ortiz and, and Charles Martin was not pay per view worthy. But damn, you could at least gave us that price. That price was like what thirty, forty dollars. Damn, how you double that price? And I feel like that card was potentially better than this card. Damn, seventy. Was it 75, 79? Shit. Anyway, y'all hit the like button, man. Comment below, share, do all that. I just wanted to share my frustrations with y'all a little bit. Because it's just, it's just, this is just crazy to me, man. I don't know what's going on. It just shows that the fighters aren't in control. Okay. The, the, I don't know if the networks are in control. We have a ranking system where guys literally get erased and penciled in at any point in time. They literally do whatever they want to do. It makes no sense. It makes, I repeat, it makes no sense for Mario Barrios and Keith Thurman to be a title eliminator. One guy coming off a two-year layoff and a loss. Other guy coming off a loss and moving up from 140. Shit. Hit the like button, man. I appreciate y'all for tuning in with me for these last 20-something minutes, man. It's your host, F. Merritt, Pound for Pound Sports Entertainment. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Support who supports you. With that being said, I am gone.